Yvonne's potatoes look like they're just about coming to an end, and I think she has plans to harvest them this coming weekend. And we'll see how the results. She's pulled a couple of potatoes, and they've been a pretty good size. Not too big, but, um, you know, a typical Yukon gold type size potato. And they've been delicious. So hopefully there's a good, a good harvest in there. It was once a beautiful daisy. And it was coming to the end of its life cycle, so we didn't have a problem with it. But the jackrabbits have been coming in here and just eating it like crazy. Now here's another evidence of jackrabbits, and this really upset Yvonne. This was sort of a lavender, and it was really a beautiful plant. Now it's nothing but a stick. They come through, and they will eat anything and everything. This was a real killer over here. Check this out. And this is why we're building this uh, new new enclosure. So Yvonne tried to protect this little plant here, and we had some of this plastic uh, chicken wire. And check it out. They ate a hole right in here. Something ate a hole right through it. Here are the, the pieces, got to the plant, and ate the plant. So I say to Yvonne, so you want to be a farmer? I was given a contract by my wife and that is to make a safe area outside of her greenhouse where she can have grow beds and we can do our best to keep uh, the local wildlife from invading. So what I've done is I had a couple uh, four by four posts, this rough, rough sawn lumber that I like using for furniture, but uh, I shoshugi bond it, gave it a couple coats with my linseed oil mineral spirits and paraffin mix that you saw me make in another video and I only went down 18 inches on these it's just going to be a small gate the material we're using is a 16 gauge galvanized uh, garden fence with a two by three foot opening it'll be three feet high I got 50 feet of it so what I did was I strung out ran a string and I drove some stakes in and I'm making an area 10 by 30 by 10 with one small gate. The posts are now set in quickcrete. I'll give them a day to dry. I have a span of 34 and a quarter, top and bottom, and that will be wide enough for us to fit the wheelbarrow through without problem. And tomorrow I'll start building the gate. So after the gate is installed, I'm debating whether I'm gonna use wooden posts or not. I may end up using T-posts because I have them handy, and I'll just put T-posts in where these stakes are currently located. That'll give us a 10 by 30 area, and then Yvonne wants to get some cattle panels and make hoops because she has, I don't know what it is, kiwi or something that really grow, uh, climbs like crazy, and she wants to have sort of a uh, climbing hoop. Two days and about 50 bucks in materials and the fenced in garden area is done. I, I had two by, uh, two by eight by twelves that I bought off the cull cart at Home Depot for 70% off. And I was able to rip those down into two by fours. And it's kind of nice. It saved some money and, uh, it was pressure treated. We did hit everything with our stain except for the main posts here, which were Shoshugi bond. And then the field fence, we dug a trench around the area, and it varies in depth from three inches down to about eight inches, depending on the slope of the land. And we just attached it using our T-50 staple gun. Holds fine. And now what we have to do is get some uh, finer hardware mesh, and we have to go around the perimeter on the outside here, probably 12, maybe 16 inches up. And we're going to use that same material and we're, we'll just connect it to the bottom of this fence just to prevent maybe snakes from crawling through. So the snake season is here. We've had a couple uh, snakes on the property, including a rattlesnake. So we want to make sure that we're uh, protecting ourselves. And we thought maybe we put Chloe in here for a while. She could be in here and this could be her little free run. So anyways... I picked up these one by six by six foot dog-eared cedar pickets at our local hardware store. I just cut off the dog ear and then uh, used one complete picket for each length, 
took one picket, cut it in half for the width, and then glued and using crown molding staples, stapled it together. I did add some extra stability in the corners using uh, some leftover redwood from the deck, and I glued and tacked that in as well. So we'll get these moved over into the new grow area. With these new beds finished, there's just one more project left to go. And what I'm going to be doing is building a frame in a similar fashion to these beds out of one by six cedar. And it's going to go right here at the end, right here at the end of the uh, grow area. And it's going to be used to secure a cattle panel a 50 inch wide by 16 foot long cattle panel that will come up and around like a hoop. So what I've got to do now is make a base for our cattle panel arbor. And here's what I was thinking. The panels are 50 inches by 16 feet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build a box using the one by six cedar pickets. Just like I did the grow beds. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a channel. So I'm gonna take a second board and I'll put it right here. Like that. And I'm gonna create a slot for the cattle panel to stick down into. So it's gonna come Go down into this channel, up, around, and into another channel over here. And then I'll secure the cattle panel to the base. And then once this is installed, so there's the cattle panel. Once this is installed in the grow area that you saw earlier, I'm going to have it go up against the back fence the back rail and where the cattle panel crosses the two by four rail, I'll secure it here with staples, with fencing staples here and here. Got it? That's the plan. Let's get going.
So I have the two side pieces, I've got these built. And again, the 50 inch wide cattle panel will fit into this slot right here. Come up, arch over, and then the other end will fit into here. Now all I need to do is take the two remaining pieces of one by six and space these out appropriately and make cross pieces. I hit these pieces with my linseed oil mineral spirits combination. Now what I'm gonna do is just take these last two boards here. I'm gonna give these a coat of uh, finish before I attach them. And then those will be the cross pieces creating a box. Now this is gonna serve as double duty. This is not only gonna serve as a, a frame for the cattle panel, but what it's gonna do is when I put those cross pieces in, it's gonna create another grow bed. We still have to get to tractor supply and pick up this uh, cattle panel. That should make an interesting video because we have a long bed F-350 truck, but these cattle panels being 16 feet long, we're trying to figure out the best way to transport them the 15 miles or so. I'm not sure how much lateral tension there's going to be on this frame once the cattle panel's in place. So I'm making these J-hooks, I guess you could call them, and they're going to fit over the frame and then be driven into the ground to hold the frame for moving laterally. We're over here at Tractor Supply and we're about to attempt to get a 16 foot cattle panel in our truck. I'm not sure how this is going to work. We kind of have an idea. We brought some 2x4s with us to give it some uh, additional stability. We may end up folding it in half. I don't know how it's going to work, but we'll figure it out. So what we did was we took two 10 foot two by fours and we bungeed it to the cattle panel to give it stability. And we have a series of bungee cords connecting the two by four to the cattle panel to the bed of the truck. Our flag's on the back and we're hanging out about six feet is what I figured is six feet. And we have about 15 miles to drive. We should be good. We'll be able to take it nice and slow.
We ended up modifying the usage of those J-bolts that I fabricated this morning. Instead of going down around the frame of the box, we decided to go two rungs up on the cattle panel. That gave the cattle panel itself more stability. And then we put one in the back corner. I wanted to get a fourth one in. I kept hitting a rock and just bent the heck out of that J-bolt. So it is what it is. It's not going anywhere. Then to give it extra stability, what I did was drill a couple half inch holes in the top rail here, and then we used heavy duty zip ties. These are zip ties for HVAC work. They're extremely heavy duty and they're not going anywhere. And those give the actual trellis a lot of, a lot of lateral stability. The cattle panel trellis is now complete. The rest of the work now becomes my wife's uh, project. She's got uh, she's got to deal with the plants, and she's going to also deal with putting a finer mesh, either chicken wire or a hardware mesh around the base. Anyways, guys, thanks again for watching. If you have any questions, let us know. We appreciate the support. Don't forget to subscribe, and we're almost at 4,000. We'll see you later. Have a good one.